world-renowned songwriter, Justin Tranter, uh, <laughs> announced that they were making the largest single donation in the history of the school. $500,000. If you spend enough money on this moment here, you will come to my recording studio. At my recording studio, you will meet whatever pop star is there for the day. They might be a superstar, or they might be a very exciting up and comer, or I might be working on a new musical with maybe Adina Menzel. You will come to my studio, then we will go to dinner, and then I, you will, I will bring you to my very, very legendary historic home and give you a tour of all 12,000 square feet. Well, they're pretty confident, right? When you're great, not to mention a music hit maker, that swagger comes easy. Our guest today, the prolific Justin Tranter. You may not know the face, but you've heard the work. Fall Out Boy Centuries was my first big hit. Selena Gomez, Good For You, Justin Bieber, Sorry, Cake By The Ocean by DNCE, which was Joe Jonas's yes. band. They are CEO and founder of their own record label, plus executive music producer for the Paramount Plus series, Grease, Rise of the Pink Ladies. I mean, I'm a bit of a, a legend in these parts. I'm Matthew Rodriguez, reminding you it's okay to ask questions. We're celebrating pioneers in the queer community in hopes of opening minds and hearts through thoughtful conversations. So I'm gonna ask some questions. I'm married to myself. Um, Are you really? Oh yeah. Oh, let's talk about that. To better understand each other, let's talk and listen. Maybe then we'll realize we're a lot more alike than different. I'm still hung up on Justin marrying themselves. Do you have sex with other people? Uh-huh. Okay, okay, so that's still allowed. All right. Okay, so the first words I heard you say where I can't pay my rent, oh. but I'm gorgeous. Thank God you were gonna say a lyric. I no. thought it was something else. I was like, girl, not with the cameras on. Okay, lyric, yes, but, yes. But guess what? You can pay that rent now. I sure can, and I am moderately attractive. Yeah, but, <laughs> you know, you're still 12, gorgeous. Thank you. You're still gorgeous. Thank you. <laughs> you're still gorgeous. But the, the thing that I realized as I've deep dived into all things Justin Tranter is that it really was hard for you to get to that point to get to the point where you are now, for you to hold your head high and be confident and, and really just spread queerness in the most beautiful, <laughs> wonderful way. Because you had a little rough go of it before, so much so that you had to leave your previous high school. Yeah, so grew up in Lake Zurich, Illinois. So I went to Lake Zurich Public School my whole life, up until I came here, um, and it was pretty awful. Um, didn't learn much. <laughs> I can't really add. Did you learn how to fight or anything? I can't spell, but I did learn how to um, be confident in the face of assholeism. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of assholeism were you facing? Just like, it's like such typical bullying. Yeah. So cliche that like using the bathroom. Um, in public school was really? always terrifying. Yep. Because they would call you out and- You're a girl, why are you in yeah. here? Or you're gay, yeah. are you trying to look at me? And I'm like, no, I'm literally just trying to use the bathroom. The bullying got so bad that it was became very physical on like almost a daily basis. And one time I was just straight up like attacked in the middle of a classroom with a teacher there. And I was sent to the vice principal's office, not the guys who attacked me. And she said to me, I'm gonna give you a week of detention, not them, because you need to think about why they're doing this to you. Wow. Which was the moment my parents were like, this. Okay, yeah, good, <laughs> yeah. thank God. Um, God this. your parents saw that. Um, I came here and auditioned, mm -hmm. and my audition was pretty bad. Um, I was so nervous. What I did you say? I did sang you know? Corner of the Sky from Pippin. Oh! Do you want to do it now? <laughs> I don't think we have the money for the rest. <laughs> um, Steven Schwartz is a friend. I can probably get it clear oh, for okay. you. Okay, uh, okay, okay. <laughs> no, but um, the, I, my audition was pretty bad. I was so nervous. I went, luckily, the teachers asked me questions, and they were yeah. like, well, why do you want to come here? Mm -hmm. And I said, well, I want to be like the biggest star in the world. And they were like, any other reason? <laughs> like leading me to like give a good answer, yeah. you know? And I luckily was told the truth, uh, which is maybe the first time I realized like how powerful the truth can be, even if it's dark. Yeah. And I was like, I'm not safe where I am. 
literally on the spot like a movie, and I get emotional every time I tell the story, um, said to me, well, we can't make you the biggest star in the world. <laughs> no one can, <laughs> which was fair because I was really bad, but we can make you safe. And that was it. I was just like accepted on the spot. Mm -hmm. My whole life was different from that moment. Like in a second, I like was able to be who I want to be every second of the day. Pretty beautiful. What was that first day like here at school? Oh my God, so overwhelming. Yeah. <laughs> These kids are crazy. I mean, even I just walking in here, I didn't go to this school. And I'm like, oh, this, this would have been nice. It was so beautiful. This school still provides a safe place because sadly, even though some things have gotten better, the world is still a show and the world can still be mean, you know? And so that's the most important thing about this school is that kids can come here and be safe. I bet these are still the same lockers that we had. All this is, is exactly the same. Like the building. And is, like I imagine you're like sitting on the side and like rehearsing and the practicing. First, the first day I walked in here, it's literally like, you know, there's just like kids in like leg warmers just like stretching <laughs> like everywhere. You know, it's like the whole, it's exactly what you would think. This is amazing pictures from my AIDS benefit that I started. Look at how you've let, like Isn't these that kids crazy? don't, do the kids even know? Oh, they know it. They yeah, it's, I mean, I'm a bit of a, a legend in these parts. <laughs> <laughs> was it here that you discovered you were gay? And were you, did you feel comfortable exploring that it, here? It was here where I, I yeah, I, I was here. I had a, a girlfriend here for like the first I couple. I mean, didn't we all? <laughs> for the first couple weeks. And she's fabulous. We're still really good of friends. Of course. She was like the first person I told, like, I think I'm queer. And she's like, no, sweetie. I know you are. Oh, oh so <laughs> she, she was no, amazing. She was just like, I'll she make did, out. She was like, you were sweet. You were nice. We had yeah. a blast. We'd like choreograph dances to Madonna when we'd like hang out at my house, you know, like. But yeah, it was here. I, I, I came out and um, realized who I was. And I mean, you always know. Yeah. But just like you feel safe enough to accept it, to tell yourself, let alone tell the world. Were there a lot of kids doing that here? Or yeah, there know, was. There was. I would imagine so. Yeah, a lot of a lot of kids out of the closet here. There was kids transitioning, you know, gender in living their gender truth in 1995, 96. Yeah. Like it was, you know, openly queer teachers, you know, like that, that will blow your mind, you know? And also here, not only did this place allow me to be free as a human being, mm -hmm. but allow me to be free as an artist. There was a teacher here, the head of the music department at the time, and she walked in on me at like lunch at, in one of the practice rooms right over mm -hmm. here was like, did you write that? And I was like, yeah, I guess. I don't know. I'm just like making it up. And she was like, I think that there's something here. If you want, come to my classroom every Friday during your lunch break and uh, like play me your songs and I'll give you feedback and I'll play you famous songs and we can break down their song structures and break down their rhyme schemes and break down where the melodies are changing and why they're changing. Um, and like fully changed my life. And I applied to six schools, five of them musical theater schools and one for songwriting. And I only got into one school. <laughs> Are you serious? You only got into Berkeley? For songwriting. So it was like oh, this amazing- Oh, they're pissed now. <laughs> they're pissed now as you write the checks. <laughs> <laughs> the first song I ever wrote was in one of these practice rooms. Really? Yeah. Can in here? In there? Let's see. Oh, it's no, locked. That's okay. You, but I mean, you made a donation. Can't we just break it or something? I'm like, <laughs> oh, I didn't even see this. Yes, the Justin Trudeau recording We walked through here. I didn't see this. Isn't that cool? Look at that. Come on, high school. Isn't this cool? Like high school. Yeah. There aren't many studios as good as this. Like this is this is mm -hmm. pretty f***ing good. Um, when we that's opened the gift. studio, I like flew in like a bunch of. My friends, well, you know, the ones who are poor, yeah. I flew in, the ones who can pay for themselves, flew themselves out. You get your own ticket. And, and we basically, it like kind of felt like my wedding, you know, like, because um, I'm married to myself. Um, are you really? Oh, yeah. Oh, let's talk about that. Yeah, I stopped dating like 10 years ago. It's just, it's too annoying. It's, it's dating seems insane. So like, per, like you don't want any part of dating? No, I'd rather, I'd rather die than like have someone sleep in my bed every night. That sounds horrifying. And it, Wow, a person who writes love songs and songs about love. They're not, they're about they're the artist's about... love. It's not, it has nothing to do with me. I have lots of love in my life. I have the yeah. best friends. I have the best family. Uh, I'm like a firm believer that like, we should respect other types of love, uh, not just romantic love. Yeah. So I married myself to be like, F you. Do you have sex with other people? Uh-huh. Okay, okay, so that's still allowed. All right. Okay, okay, okay.
I, I want to talk about, you went from Berkeley to Semi Precious Weapons, yeah. right? You met the band, the other band members there, yeah. all of which were straight, which I didn't realize that, yeah. um, which was amazing because you all just presented this like fluidity. I thought, well, I am seeing a rock star before everyone else knows who they are. Well, thank you. And no, I really mean that. And, and it was shocking to find out that your label was really hard. The record company was really hard on you. Yeah. And I had no idea that you were struggling with trying to get your work out there, getting people to believe in you, being told you were too queer, too gay, too much makeup, why are you wearing these clothes, all those things. So we had four record deals, you know, signed and dropped from four different labels. And I think at the beginning, record executives are gonna come to our show and they're gonna see these, the fans behaving the way that they behaved with me, which the fans would just go crazy and they'd be, they, as far as they were concerned, I was the, the most famous person yes. alive. So they'd see that energy and be like, oh, well, all we have to do is just put a little bit of money into this and it'll just explode. Mm -hmm. um, and when it wouldn't, every single label, like, when it didn't explode overnight, every time, then that's when they would start to go, okay, let's be less gay, let's wear less makeup. You know, in company-wide emails, um, that I was CC'd on, can you please edit the shot out, get a different shot in, in the video in, in, at 23 seconds because Justin's wrists are moving way too limp. I'm wearing like gold eyeshadow yeah. it, that we can't edit that out. So I don't think we should worry about my wrists at this point. <laughs> yes. like, what are we yeah. talking about? Um, so it would always be their sort of insecurities um, would show up when it didn't like work overnight. We have still never had a music superstar who started their career out of the closet. Mm. It has never happened. Sam Smith had two huge mm -hmm. songs in the UK before they came out. Lil Nas had the, broke every record on the planet before he came out. Mm -hmm. To this very day, it has not happened. Um, Kim Petras might be the closest thing, being mm -hmm. openly trans since the beginning of her career, but you know, her, and I worship her, I think she's so talented, but so talented. her huge hit is a Sam Smith, you know, there's Sam mm -hmm. Smith, it's a Sam, featured on a Sam Smith song. Right. So one of the, the, possibly the queerest thing to happen in music history. So I celebrate that and I, we, I worship that moment, but it's, we have still yet to have a superstar who started their, their career out of the closet. We also don't have many executives or songwriters who have. Um, whether it's Clyde Davis. Which is Davis. shocking to me. It's because you, when you think about, our, when you think about the, the kids that run through this school, many identify as queer. Yeah. And, and we go into music and we go into the arts and then somehow it all just goes away once you get into the offices or any position of power. Yeah. How it's, the hell does that happen? It is and you're, shocking. And you're there, you're in the rooms now. Yeah, no, and I still get like, disrespected in ways that other like straight hit makers at my level would never be disrespected. Mm -hmm. People canceling on me last minute and not, oh, whatever, Justin's so nice, it's fine. Because right. I have to be so nice, you know, as like one of the only super successful queer people in the music business, if I start acting like a diva, it's just- It's, you're out. And they, the minute I like stick up for myself, the words diva are used immediately. Mm -hmm. Big personality gets used immediately. Mm -hmm. When I'm like, uh, there are straight men who are much bigger divas mm -hmm. than I am, but no one ever questions it. Oh, so-and-so just knows what they want. So-and-so just knows how to get this across the finish line. It's still a fight. It's still crazy how few queer people are actually in positions of power in the music business. So when you left Semi Precious and then you saw this path towards songwriting, you got to support other people, yeah, in the best way, yeah. Um, and it how, got to how be about my feel. It felt amazing, and, and it feels amazing to help other people tell their stories. Mm -hmm. And it also, it was no longer about me, so it was no longer about my queerness. It was just about my talent, you know. Because also, when I first started getting cuts on big artists, no one had. You don't even know who wrote the song. You just an A and R right. person gets sent a song and they listen to it and they like it and they play it for the pop star and the pop star says yes. Like, oh, once it's not about who I am and what I represent, it's just about is this song amazing? Mm -hmm. My whole life changed, like overnight. So it, it's, it's kind of like the most beautiful you of like, right. well, I was right all along. I knew that these songs were amazing. I knew that I could write at the highest level. Y'all were just, homophobic right. and didn't let me shine. I see you walking in with your purse. <laughs> like, I'm here. <laughs> yeah. um, 
I didn't get to be the star I wanted to be because of homophobia. And now there's the proof that I was writing songs that were good enough for the you whole were. world to, to listen to. But at least I got there. At least I get to make music that the whole world has heard. Mm -hmm. At least I have the financial privilege to give back to a school like this. And that's amazing. And now you're only, you're not only giving back to your family in this school, but you're, you've created a record label yes. that fosters queer talent. Yeah, and what's so funny about my, my label is that the, the mission of it was never like, I wanna foster queer talent. Um, it's just what I like. It's yeah, like, yeah. you know, the first person I signed was Shia Diamond, who is a black trans woman who has- Smile, that um, song, Smile. Oh, thank you, I love that song. Love that song. That's one of my favorites of hers. I have Shia Diamond, I have Jake Wesley Rogers. Who, it's taking over the planet, slowly but surely. Who kind of is not you? So slowly. To me, I, I, I look at them and I see you. Well, thank you. You know, Jake like, is, because Jake is like, I, I'm, let's ha hang on. <laughs> like, here's the rocket ship. Yeah. And I know Elton John has noticed it and so many people. A lot. So, so when you look at Jake, do you, do you see yourself? I very and, much see myself. I think if Jake was straight, or even if Jake performs and sang and did exactly the exact same show, the exact same outfits, but was vague about mm -hmm. uh, his sexuality. I think Jake would already be the biggest star in the world. Mm -hmm. And I, Jake will be the biggest star in the world. It's just gonna take us a little bit longer um, because homophobia is still real as <laughs> But once Jake gets there, there'll be no stopping because the talent is just, I have written songs with some of the best songwriters on the planet mm -hmm. of a generation and Jake is just as good, if not better than all of them. Wow. When you have a Jake and you see them performing and up there doing their thing, do you ever have a moment of like, I want to do it again? No. No, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, what I missed about being an artist, sorry, is, is being a part of the, the whole conversation. Yeah. What does it look like? What does it feel like? What is the right way to visually represent this and blah, blah, blah. And so with the label and with some of the musicals I'm working on, I get to be a part of those conversations again. So did you get to live more of that out with Greece, which... Thank you. Like, come on. Pretty crazy. Every little musical boy's dream <laughs> when they were a little kid. Well, my favorite part of Grease was always the Pink Ladies. So yes. to work on a show that is Grease Rise of the Pink Ladies. Your executive music producer. Executive music producer, and then co-wrote all 30 original songs for the first season. Can we talk about the nostalgia factor of Grease and what that represents, and then to bring it down this other path of queerness, for lack of a better term. Yeah. The, the weight of that, did you oh, feel that weight? Because, I mean, like, probably one of the most watched musicals of all time, I, I think it is. Yeah. Um, and I think the soundtrack is, I think, officially the most successful soundtrack of any movie musical ever. Okay. Of course there's pressure to that, but like, you have to turn off the comment section in your own brain. Mm. So these, pink, these original Pink Ladies are, are four girls who just want more than they're supposed to, mm -hmm. more than the world allows them to want. Whether that's being class president, whether that's not being slut shamed, whether that's being able to live, you know, with one pink lady, Cynthia, coming into her own as, you know, it starts as just a tomboy and then you realize that she's going on a queer journey. Um, that simply by these girls just wanting a little bit more than the world tells them they're allowed to, that that creates a moral panic mm -hmm. and that, to me, is, I'm very proud to be a part of that. To me, you've uh, been closest to the sun when you sit down with stars like Selena Gomez, Gwen Stefani, I, I mean, you name, you, you know all the names. Yeah. Like, what is that like being in that, on that level of fame, like seeing it up close and personal? I mean, fame is awful. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm so grateful that I get to be, a, to, to co-write music that the whole world hears, but I don't have to be the person that deals with the whole world. Mm -hmm. I, that's all I gotta say about it. I mean, being that close to fame, understanding that these people's life, you know, when you're young and you just are so passionate about something, that you want to share that passion with the whole planet. And no matter how many movies we see or how many news stories we see or articles we read about fame being pretty awful, you still want it because you just mm -hmm. love what you're doing, you want to, and the purest form of it, you just want to share what you love with the whole world. But I, I mean, I even feel that as a songwriter, you know, as a, you're only, I say to young writers all the time, like, really celebrate your first hits, really celebrate this moment because our industry 
loves fresh blood mm -hmm. and love fresh meat and you're only fresh meat once <laughs> you know like right. when i had when my first like two years of success when there was like five six hits in a in a two-year period almost 18 month period where was your mental state at oh that i point? was i'm so lucky that i because you had already like you had been beaten down I've been quite beaten a down. bit so, so i was so lucky to find the success that i found at it, it wasn't old at all. I was My first hit was when I was 34. I work with people every day who are having their first hits and they are 21, 22, 26 at the oldest. Mm -hmm. So for me to have it at 33, I was old and I am so grateful because I literally just had a blast. Yes. <laughs> it's like I was ready to receive it. Yes. I was ready to not um, be broke anymore. I was living, you know, I had three number ones at pop radio and the money takes a while to show up and I was still living in a, two bedroom house with six people. So I was, I was bring it on. But a lot of writers that I was meeting who were also having their first hits but were way younger, so much fear, so much pressure. Can I do it again? Is it gonna happen again? I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> just, I, I did it. At least I did it. Yeah, you did I it. I just did it six times in 18 months. This is it's crazy. Insane. For anyone watching who's not familiar, Take us through some of those hits that you had in that moment and beyond. Like, you've had um, so many more. Okay, stuff. sure. That that's, it'll be a fun. See if I how good my memory is. Fallout Boy Centuries was my first big hit. Selena Gomez, Good for You. Um, Justin Bieber, Sorry. Cake by the Ocean by DNCE, which was Joe Jonas's yes. band. Um, Hands to Myself, Selena Gomez. Which I love. Thank you. And didn't know you wrote that. Until oh, really? Then. Didn't know you wrote that. Oh, I love that. Until recently. That's it's one like of my one favorites. It's like oh. so quirky and I odd. And I'm so in the good. shower and I'm feeling myself. <laughs> I'm Bieber, I'm Celine Dion. I come in and I go, hi. What, what is the, how does it start? How it's, does it... it starts with, like just me having what they think is a very casual conversation. Okay. Um, but it's not casual at all. I'm not trying to make new friends. So I, I, I just ah, yeah. um, ask them about their life and I just start figuring out if they're naturally vulnerable and open. Um, it's really easy to find the song in the conversation. Wow. Cake by the Ocean for Joe Jonas. Um, I spent like a week with him, getting to know him at that point in his life, he was like, everything was great. And he just like would endlessly show me like the dumbest, funniest memes you've ever seen. And he was like in this very wonderful new relationship. Mm -hmm. So I was like, well, he's really hot and he's really goofy. So let's just write like a really goofy sex song. Mm -hmm. So like sometimes the truth is like a Selena Gomez lose you to love me of like something that's very vulnerable, very heartfelt, very deep. And sometimes finding the artist's truth is something goofy and sexy like Cake by the Ocean. And it's also kind of fun too because I don't like pop music. <laughs> so I never- You don't? No, I never listen to pop music on purpose. What do you listen to? Um, a lot I'm of like- I'm like shocked by that. A lot of like lesbians with guitars who I think oh, are the okay. best lyricists of all time that no one didn't give them the respect that they deserved. A lot of folk music. Okay. Um, a lot of alternative country, Americana. So it's kind of fun for me because it's like, you know, Selena Gomez, Good For You, which was my first like traditional pop hit. I knew it was special, but I maybe listened to it twice. Really? You know, it's just, I don't- Meanwhile, it was streamed like a billion times. Yeah, two billion number times one at something. radio and just the whole thing. So, oh my God. Um, Justin Bieber, Sorry, I don't think I listened to one time after we wrote it. Stop it. Yeah, I get nervous when there's songs that I write and I'm like, ooh, let's listen to that Again, yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh, it's probably not a hit. Oh, <laughs> right, that's true, okay. that's true. Okay. okay. The name of this show is It's Okay to Ask Questions. Ooh, I love that. Yeah. What is the one question that you always get that affects you about wh whether your queerness or your life or, the, or your lifestyle? Is there a question that always stands out for you? I mean, this doesn't really have to do with queerness. But I mean, my whole life has to do with queerness, so mm -hmm. kind of, but I get asked the question all the time of like, how, how do you get there? Your music to be heard, how do you get success? How do you this, and, and sadly the answer to that question is like, the only, there isn't really a way to do it. Um, but because of this school, I was able to be like so delusional in mm. my confidence. I was able to feel so validated in who I am as a person and who I was as an artist. I literally like give credit, it's all because of this school, that I was able to be like, you're all wrong, 
the world is wrong. Yeah. The industry yeah. is wrong. And they were. You're gonna catch up with me eventually. Like, trust me, I, it's like that beautiful teenage delusion that this school did not kill in me. They let me be delusional. <laughs> they let me believe that I could be great, that I could, you think you're a Broadway star, but now you wanna write songs? Sure, <laughs> go for it. You wanna start an AIDS benefit. You know, I started an AIDS yes. benefit here, and that AIDS benefit still happens here at this school. Um, 25 years later, that's the only way you can, you can get to the top of whatever industry it is that you're trying to get to, is you have to believe in yourself so deeply that when you get a million no's, you just keep going, well, they're wrong. Well, they're wrong. They're wrong. And you know? they are, yeah. and they were. Yeah. Well, listen, I, I'm like beyond proud to celebrate you and all that you've done, truly. And I'm so happy you can pay your rent now. <laughs> I'm so happy about I'm that. I'm paying a lot of people's rent. You are paying a lot of people's rent. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>